This is the AR and IO language course, episode two. We open episode two by reviewing some of the vocabulary introduced in episode one and expanding on that vocabulary. What does that mean? It means we discuss some meanings that those words have or some ways that you can use those words in a sentence that were not covered in episode one. But this will refresh your memory if you are using this series of videos more seriously and intensively as a real language course. Throughout this course, we use examples drawn from Chinese history and from current and ongoing political controversies. We deal with even the simplest aspects of the Chinese language in a sophisticated way. If you don't know what AR and IO stands for, it's active research and informed opinion. I hope that you can cultivate an informed opinion about Chinese politics while at the same time working to improve your ability in the Chinese language. Da -da 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 -da. So this word cho, cho with tone one, cho, we reflected on at quite some length in the first episode. If I were to describe a fundamental meaning to it or a root meaning to it, it would be this verbal sense of to pull something, to draw something out. And then in an abstract sense, we can imagine the etymological origin of these other meanings as being linked to that fundamental meaning. So the idea of pulling the smoke from a cigarette, drawing it out. And then most remarkably of all, we have this sense of it meaning an abstraction, like abstract reasoning, also in the arts, abstract painting. So I just have this on screen without the pinion for a moment, because I know some of you would like to challenge yourselves, if you're an intermediate student, to see how much of this you can read, how much of this you can understand, without relying on the uh, pinion interpretation. While my lovely assistant was reading that to you aloud, you will have noticed that the word chosyang is highlighted in yellow. However, long before we get to the word chosyang, we have this interesting word, kang yi. Kang yi suggests a protest or an objection of one kind or another. In the case of the four character phrase, Kang yi you xing, then we are talking about a demonstration in the sense of people marching in protest. Now, all of these words are also quite confusing in English. If you look up the word demonstrate and demonstration in English, it has many, many meanings. Well, we have to forgive Chinese because Kang Yi has quite a few different possible meanings too. It could just be that you are voicing your objection to something, that you're disagreeing with something verbally, that you know, you're in a business meeting, say, and you're going to voice your objection to what your boss is saying. It could, when combined with the right verb, it could mean that you're giving in a written complaint, that you're protesting in writing, maybe you've even filled out a form. However, yes, in this sort of political context, you may mean street demonstrations, you may mean even quite violent demonstrations. I would say that uh, this particular word, Kang Yi, has quite positive connotations, though. If you read uh, Chinese government publications or Chinese government propaganda, you will very often see more disparaging terms being used to refer to protest. So, Ta Tan Dao Xiang Gang de Kang Yi. Ta Tan Dao Xiang Gang de Kang Yi. So, if you don't recognize Xiang Gang, that is how we say Hong Kong in modern standard Mandarin. He spoke about the protests in Hong Kong. This is not something abstract. In the English language, we have a confusing relationship between the verb meaning to draw and then the noun a drawer to draw a desk drawer. Well, if English is confusing on this, I suppose Chinese must be permitted to be a little bit confusing on the same matter. They do form the standard noun for desk drawer, again using cho, although here it's, it's not in a verbal sense, it's just part of the noun in the same sense that drawer in English is in fact a noun even though it's related to a verb. Chou ti. La ke chou ti. But we have this simple, fundamental meaning, the sense being 
to pull the string on a spinning top, for example. And as you see in the picture here, the Chinese concept of what a spinning top is supposed to be as a toy is not quite the same as what you might have in North America or Western Europe. This is my finger. This is a photograph I took myself uh, living in Taiwan. I found this delightful example of a use of a uh, cho in practice. Uh, Googling around, I find that a great variety of products, promotions, promotions from uh, restaurant chains, coffee shops like Starbucks, and also uh, gambling seems to use this particular phrase, cho cho le. Here's another funny example that I found myself. Uh, discovering a use of the word in the wild. Again, this is my own finger, this is my own photograph. 100 pulls, right? You can pull on this uh, box of tissue paper 100 times before it runs out of tissues. So instead of saying it has 100 items, you get 100 pulls. Episode one concluded with a homework assignment for you in the audience. We began to tell the tale of Norman Bethune. So the first six characters at the top of the screen here are a phonetic transcription of his name into Chinese. Norman by Chuan Shi, Canada, Gongchan Dang Yuan. Canada, Gongchan Dang, Gongchan Dang Yuan. As you've just heard, the first and most important fact that you need to hear about Norman Bethune is that he was a Canadian member of the Communist Party. Dear Edith, please pass word along to the party. I'm extremely excited to be able to inform you. Today, I arrived at my destination, the headquarters of the Jingchaji Military District. Yes, that's right. There was a white Canadian medical doctor who flew to China to join the Communist Revolution. He saved a small number of lives, and he supported the Communist Party in its mass murder of millions of others. 白球恩全名诺尔曼白球恩 No, don't worry, we're not going to make use of that audio clip I just played where she's speaking Chinese much too rapidly for a foreign student of the language. But I'm playing you that clip just to draw your attention to the fact that Norman Bethune is not merely the focus of Chinese communist propaganda from the 1960s. No, no. The production of new cinema, new TV shows, new lectures, new textbooks, he is very much a featured protagonist in Chinese propaganda still to this day. Why is my I do not know how much of the Chinese language Norman Bethune managed to learn when he was living and working in China, but he is depicted here in this propaganda film as speaking plausible level one Chinese, speaking very simple and slow Chinese in the same way that you or I might struggle to speak Chinese. So he asks the young woman here, why did you not complete your studies? But to read this more uh, word by word precisely, why did you not study to completion? So this particular one is used in combination with many different verbs, not all verbs, but many, many different verbs to suggest the completion of the action. Note that the negating particle here is may. It's not bu, it's may. Why did you not study until the point of completion? One thing that's consistent, strangely, in all the propaganda reinterpretations and representations of Norman Bethune is that they try to make him resemble the Russian revolutionary leader, Lenin. 
they make him look like Vladimir Ilyich Lenin. And the actual historical figure, if you look at the photographs, he really didn't have any resemblance to Lenin at all. And yeah, by the way, um, this intersects with my own family history. In case you hadn't guessed, my parents were Chinese communist extremists, and they named my sister after Norman Bethune. So even though my sister, obviously born female, she was named after this guy. And so we return to your homework assignment from episode one. If you were wondering what textbook I am quoting this from, let me tell you something. There are some textbooks that really help you learn the Chinese language. There are some textbooks that are chock full of government propaganda. And there are some textbooks that are both. This anonymously written publication from the Chinese Communist government in 1976 is instructive in more ways than one. It will help you to learn the Chinese language. I sincerely doubt it will convince you to convert to Chinese communism. You guys are familiar with most of this vocabulary by now, so we can go fairly rapidly through the first sentence. Norman by Joan she Canada Gongchangdangyuan. Let's pause for just one moment on this word yuan. I tried to draw your attention to this before with text on screen. It is not really the same as saying that someone is a Communist Party member. In most of its uses, yuan really does mean an employee or especially an official in the sense of government official. At the very start of the episode, I reiterated my promise that in each episode, I try to take at least one word and break it down into its components, into its radicals, as we say in Chinese. This one seems self-evident. The bottom half is bei. Bei is one of the most common glyphs, one of the most common symbols, one of the most common radicals in the whole of the Chinese language. It is a pictograph of a cowrie shell. So this is a type of shell found in the ocean that in ancient times was used as currency. It was used as money. So today it's found in many words related to value, treasure, money, that sort of thing. You will hear in casual Chinese slang already at level one, bao bei. Bao bei. However, the visual etymology of this word does not stop with bei, because it turns out that bei is just a corruption for ding. And what is ding? You will find the English translation of ding is ding. This is in the class of words where we do not bother to translate it in English. We now have a proper noun in the English language. We say this is a ding, that is a ding. What is a ding? If you put the word into Google image search, you will soon see that it is a ritual object from ancient times in China, very commonly seen in museums today, and probably very rarely seen outside of a museum if you live in the Western world. This is a great example of how studying the etymology of a word in Chinese sometimes tells you everything but reveals nothing. So the history of this character is that today we write it as a cowrie shell, a type of seashell with a square above it, whereas in ancient times it was written with this ding, this ritual object, with a square above it. How does that relate to the meaning? Perhaps not at all. Norman by Chuan Shi Janada Gong Chan Dang Yuan Tashuga Yongming the Dai Fu with the Bangju Jonggu the Kangre Jan Jung Yi Jiu San Chi Nian Lai Dao Jonggu. See you next episode. <laughs>